Well, hello, my friends. Welcome back to another unsolicited and unedicated football analysis by your friend David Valentin, this time from my kitchen. Hey, um, the topic today is something that I got to see on the Twitter sphere that um, surprised me a little bit because 26 seasons into MLS, we still hear the same guys screaming, this is why Europe doesn't take us seriously. The reason why this person was uh, saying this old use and tired uh, excuse why we have to do things like other countries is because of Nashville's soccer Moses. First of all, I think the fan is showing a lot of ingenuity, a lot of passion by doing that. And those of you guys that don't know what I'm talking about, it's basically a fan that dresses like Moses in natural colors and holds a banner saying, let my people go. And uh, I think it's funny. I think it's, it's witty. And I think uh, it screams of Americana. Uh, there was a person that actually tweeted me uh, and said, hey, as a, as a Jewish person, don't you think that is offensive and I'm like well a few years back I took a picture with uh, off-season Santa Claus dressed as Moses at a Jewish festival in Daytona Beach so I don't think I will ever be offended by that but you know again you know we we have to mind those type of things nowadays I guess I think that our league uh, shows a lot of um, a lot of flavor by having things like you know Soccer Moses, Timber Joey, the Golden Spike at Atlanta. Uh, now the uh, Jackhammer guys in uh, Columbus, and it's uh, et cetera, et cetera. Each city in our country has a culture. Each state has a culture. And at MLS Games, we get to witness, we get to see uh, that culture, that flavor come to the surface. And I think it makes us unique. It makes entices away fans to go visit that city, get to know another part of the country. And maybe you can't tell by following me on social media, uh, because I like to troll, <laughs> I like to make fun of other teams when my team wins and theirs loses. But uh, in retrospective, after years of soul searching, I have come to respect, appreciate, and uh, have close friendships with fans from other uh, fan bases because. Um, at the end of the day, we all want football to be successful in our country, and we're all in this together, and I think that surpasses the petty rivalries and uh, territorial uh, fiefdoms of each MLS club, and that's, that's what should unite us at the end of the day. Uh, we want our sport to grow in our country. We want to uh, spread the word. As a matter of fact, this last week, uh, I went with my family to the latest Orlando City game against Red Bull, which Orlando City lost, by the way. Um, and I was impressed at the fact that there was a family of seven behind us who were going on their first MLS game just because a friend invited them. And the, um, the thing that surprised me the most was even though we lost, the final reaction from the gentleman behind me was, I have to come back. I have to come back and see them win. And that, my friends, is what happens when people feel welcome and not judge. They had questions. Do we go to overtime if it's tied? Uh, what happens? How do you make playoffs? And I happily answer those questions for them. They didn't ask me. I just I said, turn around and say, excuse me, if I may interrupt. And they were grateful uh, for that. So those are the type of things that we have to do as fans. We have, instead of being gatekeepers, instead of being tribalist, we need to help all the people out. We get, need to get people excited. 
I have been, have been blessed to work for, interna for national and international companies, and I get to work with people throughout my state and throughout the United States. And when I had meetings or trainings where I had to travel somewhere else, I would preach MLS. I would preach the game of football or soccer. And yes, you may say, well, perhaps you want to recruit more fans for your team. Why would I do that? If the guy tells me he lives in Colorado, follow the Rapids. If the guy tells me he lives in Washington State, hey, you can uh, either follow uh, Portland or you can follow Vancouver or you can follow Seattle, whatever, whichever one is closest to you. Because at the end of the day, in order to grow football in our country, we have to have people going to the stadium and supporting their local club. And by local, right now, I mean whatever's closest to them. It not necessarily has to be an MLS team, but it's the league that's being attacked in these uh, tweets of late. I follow a team in the Israeli Premier, and I follow a team in the English 4th uh, Division in League 2, like I have said a thousand times in these videos. And I have been able to experience um, football through the perspective of two distinctive countries, uh, one which we share language with and one in which I share religion and culture with. Um, and I have to tell you that the passion it remains the same. The desire to win is always the same. Now, the culture of the country definitely dictates how those people experience the game they experience and for americans includes tailgating for americans includes uh carnival atmosphere outside of the stadiums uh for americans includes um uh honoring uh veterans and first responders standing for the national anthem something that has been uh, has been attacked by many people because they feel that the national anthem has no place in league play. That's an uh, argument and a controversy for another day, another video, perhaps. Um, we have fireworks in uh, in our stadiums. We have, uh, you know, we have people chanting uh, chants that perhaps in other countries they don't use. We don't have to apologize for being who we are. We don't go to other countries and say, you're playing baseball the wrong way or you're playing basketball the wrong way. So I don't understand why is it that we have to change our football culture to sort of meet the approval of other people. You, in your house, you do whatever the hell you want, okay? You do what you want. So if you do that in your house, you don't let somebody knock at your door and say, hey, by the way, you're folding the toilet paper and the bed sheets the wrong way. I'm going to show you. Otherwise, you don't know how to take it home. The first thing you're going to do is throw the door at them, or if, or if not, punch them square in the face. <laughs> That's what you're going to do. So if that, that example that sounds so ridiculous and laughable is exactly the same thing that we're having when it comes to our national league in the United States and Canada. Let people go have fun. Football is not a religion. Football is this uh, restrictive culture um, that cannot morph into anything else. Football is not a set of rules set in stone for what you need to do come game day, what you need to do come uh, your game day experience. You get to define culture. If you go to Africa, you go to Latin America, you go uh, to Asia, you will see that in those countries, football is a completely different thing than Europe. And by Europe, I'm talking about primarily the four biggest uh, leagues in Western Europe. There's other countries that are doing different things. But unfortunately, to the Euro snobs that are limited to basically what their TV shows them, because I seriously doubt any of these people will pay money to watch the Romanian League or the Russian League or the, the National League of San Marino, if they have one. I don't know. Perhaps they play in the Italian League. We'll need to find out. But the fact is, is that these people only complain about what they see on TV. Is English Premiership the best football in the world? 
maybe we don't know they get paid the best the most out of all leagues in the world they definitely have the biggest names in my opinion guess what maybe mls can be like that one day one of the biggest things is the pro relegation thing that's the another, another attack again i already addressed that uh, in another video but i just wanted to talk to you the mls fan and let you know that however you football is your damn business you don't need to apologize to anybody you don't need to explain yourself to anybody you don't need to my friends you don't need to get nobody's approval this is what i want you to do on the next home game of your club or next away game that you have the blessing to jump on an airplane or car to go to you're gonna go to the game you're going to get dressed in your team colors. You're going to get all your friends and family members. You're going to go to the stadium, and you're going to have a freaking good time. That's what you're going to do. You're going to support your club. You're going to cheer every single goal. You're going to complain about the ref. And if you win, great. If you lose, move on to the next one. That's what you need to do. You need to stop complaining and asking and, and defending your league. It's a tiresome job, my friends. And besides, all these people... All they have to do is complain and they feel validation when you try to fight them because people who go on social media to complain are people are the equivalent of somebody taking a crap in a paperback, setting, the, setting it on fire and putting it on somebody's porch. That's exactly what happens. So to these people that contribute nothing to football in our country, to the troops of the 7 a.m. watch on TV uh, uh footballers of the world air quotes i tell them you know what you're missing out you're missing out on the experience of going to support your local club in whatever league that may be you're missing out going to the stadium you're missing out on being with your friends you're missing out being surrounded by people you're missing out growing the sport in their con in the country where you live that's what you're doing so with that said, my friends, thank you for watching. Please share this with other MLS fans. It's more what unites us than what separates us. And if I can do the Lord's work on this beautiful night, day, or afternoon that you're watching this, I want to think that this will reach out to you and get you in good spirits and motivate you to keep working to make MLS a better league than it was 26 years ago. 26 years ago i remember i am old enough to remember a world without mls and this is a better world with it and um my dream is for my club to lift that mls cup at the end of the year if it happens great if it doesn't there's always next year that's the beauty of our league thank you very much and may god bless you